Welcome back. Now, once you understand how to create a Zoom meeting or a Zoom webinar, there are a few other advanced meeting processes that you'll want to be aware of. For example, if we were to start a meeting and we were to join that meeting and we were to attempt to share our screen, one of the things that you will notice is that you can share your iPhone or iPad screen. If you were to click this and you were to click share, you'll notice then that you have a plugin that you'd need to install in order to do that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to click install the plugin. And so now the install process has begun. You'll need to make sure that your iPhone is going to be connected to the same network as your personal computer. Once you do that, you'll then need to tap on screen mirroring and then choose Zoom owner. You'll then see your iPhone screen and then you'll see the mirroring process. And your iPhone will then be available to you on your Zoom meeting or your webinar. And if you have the webinar plan, you probably have seen that you can connect to Zoom through Facebook Facebook Workplace, YouTube, as well as a custom live streaming service. Now we can use the custom live streaming service so that we can connect to Twitter, social media networks at the same time, which is called multi-streaming. We will walk through the entire process start to finish in this course. And this is important where you'd want to invite someone to have a conversation and broadcast that conversation throughout your social media network which is something that you can do in this process that we'll be showing you in this course. And you may have noticed that there are sites such as meetup.com that now do online events. And in particular, you're going to see that their suggested vendor is going to be Zoom. However, integrating Zoom into meetup.com isn't actually an integration. It's basically placing a link. In this course, we will show you specific integrations that will allow you to automate some processes over and above just placing your link. So in the first video, we will walk through the process of connecting Zoom to an auto scheduling system. We'll actually do this twice with two of the most popular auto scheduling systems so that you can manage your appointments and automatically create Zoom meetings with those you will be holding discussion and meeting with. Welcome back. Now, before you work with more advanced settings in order to get your Zoom connected to your calendar, you're going to want to make sure that you use the basic plugins that Zoom gives you in the meeting area. In particular, you're going to have a Microsoft Outlook plugin. If you use Microsoft Outlook, this is a way for you to manage your meetings inside of Outlook as well as the Chrome extension. First, what we're going to do is we're going to download the Microsoft Office plugin. We're then going to install the plugin. We'll then go through the setup wizard. Now this is going to take some time to execute. So even if you see this message and it looks like it's taking a little while, that typically is part of the process. And again, it's going to take time in order for the installation to complete. Now, once this has been installed, you'll notice then that you have a Zoom icon inside of your Microsoft Outlook if you go to the calendar area. And so what we can do then is we can then click one of these buttons. We can click schedule a meeting and you'll see a dialog box come open inside of Microsoft Outlook. And as long as you are connected to the Internet, Microsoft Outlook will then go and fetch some of the information from your Zoom account. So, for example, we can then go through the process of deciding what kind of meeting or webinar we want to have. We can disable the password, for example. We can choose who gets the video. We have advanced options in setting the meeting. And you may recognize some of these options from your Zoom meeting settings. We'll do that. We'll then click continue. And the meeting scheduling will then come into your dialog box. You can then decide on what you're going to call the meeting. In this particular case, we're going to give it a unique name. You'll notice then that the meeting then has a time inside of Zoom. And so when we send this invitation, it's going to have all the pertinent information to the people that are going to get it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to write in a contact name. 
And then we're going to then send this information through Microsoft Outlook. And you'll see then that Microsoft Outlook is interacting with our Zoom account. What you'll also see here is that we have an appointment inside of our Microsoft Outlook calendar. Now, if you were to go to your Zoom account, what you should see is you should see a meeting having already been scheduled that's inside of Microsoft Outlook. Now, if you go into your Zoom account, what you should see is you should see an appointment having been set with a meeting that has a title that looks like the one you're seeing on your screen. And indeed, if we come to our Zoom account, we're going to see a meeting having already been created that's set to our Microsoft Outlook account. What we can also do from within Outlook is schedule an instant meeting with our contacts. So for example, what we can do here is we can click Start Instant Meeting and our Zoom client will then be available. And our meeting facility will then be ready to be used. If you want to cancel the meeting, you can go to the specific appointment you can double click the appointment that'll open it up and what we can do is we can then either update this meeting or in some cases what we can do is we can cancel the meeting so for example let's assume then we're going to cancel this meeting we're then going to click this dialog box we're then going to send the update and if we go back and refresh we will no longer see the meeting inside of zoom what we can also do from inside of Zoom, inside of your meeting settings, is to download the Zoom Chrome plugin. So for example, what we'll do is we'll click the download button. What you're going to see here is the Zoom scheduler. What we're then going to do is click add to Chrome. We're then going to add this extension. You'll then see that the Zoom scheduler has been added to Chrome. We'll then click on the Zoom icon, which will open up this dialog. What we'll then do is we'll sign into our Zoom account. Once we sign into our Zoom account, what we can do is click this button that says schedule a meeting. Now, when you come into your Google Calendar item, what you're going to notice is that you can write in the title. You're also going to notice that you have all of your Zoom meeting information inside of the message area. What we can then do is we can then save this message with our new title, which is basically going to be a Zoom Calendar item. So we're going to click Save. What you'll now notice is that this item is now going to be part of our calendar. If we come back to our Zoom account and we hit F5, we're going to see now that we have our meeting title here in this area. What we can then do is we can come to that item and we can cancel the meeting from within our Google Calendar. And we will have deleted our message you're going to see a message at the bottom of your screen for the calendar. And if you come back to your Zoom item, you'll notice that those webinars no longer appear inside of Zoom. So what we've done now is we've done a basic calendar management connection. In the next process, we'll look at doing a more complex calendar management system along with Zoom. Welcome back. Now you may want to work with people to become part of your Zoom webinar or your Zoom meeting without having to trade emails with them. And one of the ways to do that is to use a cloud-based automated calendar system. One system that works in this way is called Calendly, and you can find it in your favorite search engine. You'll see it in your search results. What you'll need to do is to set up your account with Calendly. Now, as of the recording of this video, integration with Calendly and Zoom is going to be free. However, in future times, it's quite possible that this integration will be part of a paid version of Calendly. But for now, what we're going to do is sign up for Calendly and to connect our Zoom account. So we're going to enter our email inside of Calendly. Now, it's quite possible that you may already have an account with Calendly. At this point, you can skip ahead in the video to the point where the account has already been set up and open. You're going to need to go through the free setup process. You're going to need to then go to your inbox to verify your email. You'll then need to sign in to your Calendly account. Once you are inside of your Calendly account, what you'll need to do is to go to the integrations area. 
Now, depending on when you are watching this video, you may have to search for Zoom. As of this moment, you can see Zoom right on your front page. You can click on the Zoom integration. What we're now going to do is we're going to click this button that says Connect Zoom. Now, because we are using the browser where we are already logged into our Zoom account, Calendy has already connected to our Zoom account and we come to this dialog. That means then that we're going to then be able to click pre-approve. And then once we've done that, we can then click authorize so that Zoom can interact with our Calendly account. We're going to need to follow this process that Zoom is suggesting that we do. And that's to go to our home page and then edit our Zoom information. What we're going to do now that we've come to our Calendly homepage is we're going to click new event type. We're then going to click Create. Now, when we click Location, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a Zoom web conference. We're now going to give our event a name. We're going to give our event a description. We're now going to click Next. We're going to give the event a duration. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up our availability. Once we've done that, we're then going to click Next. What you'll now notice is that inside of Calendly, we are now ready to accept this kind of event. So what we can do now is we can give this link to other people so that they can book a time with us in order to be inside of our Zoom account. Now when other people come to this page, this is what they're going to see. What they're then going to need to do is they're going to need to pick a date they're then going to pick a time in order to have a Zoom meeting. They're then going to confirm the meeting. They're then going to enter their name and email address. What they're then going to do is schedule the event. That individual has now booked a time on your calendar inside of Calendly. And when you come inside of Calendly, what you'll see is that you now have an event booked with a specific individual inside of your Calendly account. What you'll also see is that the event is now inside of our Zoom account and all we'll have to do is to come to Zoom at the time appointed in order to click this button to start the meeting. And the person with whom you have the meeting will have an email reminder inside of their box that they will be meeting with you on Zoom and they can then add it to their own Google Calendar or to their iCal or Outlook. It's quite possible that you can find out that you will not be available as you thought you would at the date and the time at which the appointment is going to be scheduled. So what you can do inside of your Calendly account is that you can then reschedule the appointment. You can click on reschedule and you can pick another day and time. We're going to write in the reason for the change and then you can click on update event. The event inside of your Calendly account has now been rescheduled. The event inside of the person's email has also been rescheduled. And what we're going to do now is we're going to refresh our page by hitting F5. And you're going to notice then that the meeting date changed in order to accommodate the new time that we have set inside of Calendly. So you can book and control your appointments inside of Zoom, create your meeting so that all you'll have to do is to go in and start the meeting at the appointed time. Welcome back. Now another cloud-based automated scheduling system is called Schedule Once. And you'll notice we are inside of the member area and that it states that it integrates natively with virtual meeting tools. One of them has the icon for Zoom. So what we're going to do now is we're going to configure video conferencing with Zoom. Now, one of the things you'll notice about Schedule Once is that Schedule Once is compatible with all Zoom plans. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this Connect button so that we can connect with our Zoom account. 
Now you'll want to be logged into your Zoom account when you undertake this process. And what you're going to see here is you're going to click this button that says authorize. What we need to do now is we'll need to then go to our setup. We'll need to then go to our booking page and location settings. And then we'll need to select that this is going to be a virtual meeting so that we can edit our Zoom settings. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click close. On schedule once, we are going to select a specific kind of event, which is called a booking page. So it's going to be the kind of event that we'll want to see over and over again. Schedule once will make this into a specific public link. We are going to set ourselves up with the owner and then we are going to make this so that it matches up with a specific event type that we have already set up. If we want to have a specific booking page image, we can do that. Once we have one, we'll then click confirm. Now what we're going to do is click save and exit. So now what we need to do inside of this booking page is that we need to first specify when we're going to be available. And once we've done that, we can then start with our location settings. And we're going to make sure that this is going to be a virtual meeting that is going to be provided by us, the owner of the account. We're going to make sure that this is going to be stated as a video conference with Zoom. Now we have some choices. We can make sure that the meeting password will be required. We're not going to do that in this case. We can make sure that the meeting will automatically be recorded. Is this something that's a good idea to do? We can state where we want the recording to be housed. We can say we want it to be in the cloud. We can make sure that video is going to be started when individuals join the meeting. So in this case, we're going to start video for the host and the participants. Once we do that, we can then click save. We can make sure that the individual is notified by both email as well as SMS. Once our booking page is complete, we can then go back to grab our link to pass on to individuals that need to book an appointment with us on Zoom. The individual will then see our URL and then they'll be taken to a calendar. They can then select their time according to their time zone. They will then choose a specific day. They will then choose a specific time in which to meet with us. They'll then click continue. They'll then fill in their name and email address. Once they've completed this process, they can click done. They'll then have all their booking details displayed on the actual screen and their email will then be in their inbox. Now you can come back to your Zoom calendar. You can refresh your page and you'll then see your new setup appointment inside of Zoom. Now at the account holder, you can decide that you won't be able to make it at this specific time. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to request a reschedule. You can either cancel the booking or send a reschedule request. We are going to send a reschedule request. We're going to give a reschedule reason. We're then going to click next. What we're then going to do is cancel the existing booking and we're then going to request that the individual reschedule. Then your request will then be sent to that individual. If you go back, what you can do is you'll check your page You'll notice then that the appointment is no longer in its place. That individual gets a reschedule request inside of their inbox. So what they can then do is click reschedule now. They'll then come back to your availability calendar. They will select a date and a time. They'll then click schedule. All the information will be available then on their screen. What you'll then see inside of Schedule 1 is a new request from that individual for another meeting. And when we come back to our Zoom account, what we'll do is we will click F5 and we'll see that our meeting then has been rescheduled and it is now available inside of Zoom. So at the time of the meeting, all we'll need to do is to come inside of Zoom and click Start the Meeting. 
the individual will already have their link available to them and they'll show up inside of our Zoom room so that we can conduct a meeting using Zoom. Hello and welcome. Now in this video we are going to broadcast our Zoom meeting live inside of our Facebook group. And to do that we're going to click on New Meeting. And we're going to start a new meeting. So we're going to connect to the Zoom meeting room. We're going to join with our computer audio. We're now going to enter full screen. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to use the connection that Zoom has through the webinar account allowing you to connect direct to Facebook Live. And so to do that, you're going to go to this More button. Now again, you do need to have the webinar plugin available inside of Zoom to have these choices available to you. And what we're going to do is we're going to click Live on Facebook. And when we do that, Zoom is then going to connect with Facebook. And what we're going to do is we're going to select a specific group and we're going to write the name of that group in. And we're then going to click Next. Now Facebook will stop the recording temporarily in order to connect with your room. And so what we're going to do now is connect the two between Facebook and your Zoom meeting room. Now this process can take time. And typically, what will happen is that Facebook will give you the choice between its live producer and the direct connection. Now, because we've already made the direct connection, we're going to dismiss this message. And you're now looking at the preview. So what you're going to do now is you're then going to post your live meeting. And so we're going to write in a message. And what we're then going to do is click Go Live. Facebook will request that we add a title. Once we do that, we'll then click Go Live. And what you'll then see is you'll then see a preview and you'll start to see Zoom making the connection between your meeting room and Facebook Live. Once this connection is made, you will then be live inside of your Facebook group. And what you'll notice then is that you will then be broadcasting live inside of your Facebook group. However, it's quite possible that you may not want to use that direct connection between Facebook and Zoom. And there is another way to connect to your Facebook group. You're going to go down to the bottom where you see those three dots again. What we're going to do is stop this live stream. When we do that, what we're doing is going back to the three dots and we're going to see that there is a way to connect live on custom live streaming service. And that is the way that we are going to connect. However, we do have a multi-step process in order to do that. So what we're going to do here is stop the video and we're going to visit a site which is a paid service called Restream.io. Now as of the recording of this video, Restream.io has a free plan that allows you to stream to your Facebook personal profile. It also has a paid plan that will allow you to stream to your public page, group, or personal profile. Now inside of Restream, if you have the paid plan, you can connect to your Facebook group. And to do that, we're going to click on Add Channel once we are inside of Restream. We're then going to look for groups and public pages for Facebook and we're going to click this button. We're then going to make sure that we are logged into Facebook. And if we are, we're going to click this button that says connect Facebook. Now Restream will ask us to stream to something specific and we are going to choose our Facebook group. Once we've chosen our Facebook group, we are going to click save. And then our Facebook group has then been selected and Restream will direct our live stream from Zoom to our Facebook group. But what we now need to do is we now need to connect our Zoom account to our Restream account so that it will make the connection. And to do that, we're going to go into a specific meeting or webinar inside of Zoom. 
Now, when we create this meeting, we are going to create it knowing that we are going to be using the restream process in order to get it into our Facebook group. So once we've set our parameters, we're going to click save. What's then going to happen is that our webinar will then be saved and it's ready for us to start it. However, what we're going to do is come all the way down to the bottom and we're going to click this tab that says live streaming. And once we get to this live streaming tab, what we're going to do is we're going to configure the live stream settings. Now, Zoom then wants the stream URL, the stream key, and the page URL where you will be watching the actual live stream to make sure that it is moving in the direction that you want it. So we're going to go now back to Restream to get all of that information, the URL, the key, and the live streaming page. And so we're going to come here to get the URL. We're going to copy it. We're then going to head back to Zoom. And we're going to place that stream URL here in the top section. We're now going to go back and get the stream key. Once we've done that, we'll then head back to our Zoom account. We'll then enter the stream key. Now the live streaming page URL, the live streaming page URL doesn't necessarily make a connection but it will send us to a specific page so we can watch for our live stream. So what you want to do is you want to get the page where your live stream is going so that you'll be able to see directly if your stream is working properly. So we're now going to get the group URL and we're now going to head back to Zoom. And we're then going to enter the live streaming page URL. Once we've done that, we can then click save. Now our live stream is ready to start. So we're going to click start this meeting. We're then going to open up our Zoom meeting. We're then going to join the meeting with our computer audio. And at this point, we are then now working inside of Zoom and we now need to look to make sure that we are connecting to Restream. But you're not yet going to be fully connected. And so what you're going to need to do is to go to your three dots. You're then going to go live on a custom live streaming service. Zoom will then enter into the custom live streaming service. What you'll notice then is that the custom live streaming service brings us to the page that we specify. And this is going to be very important because now we'll know that our live stream is actually working and we'll be able to work from this perspective. We can now see our Zoom stream operating through Restream. So basically now what we can do is we can either share our stream or start sharing our meeting content. What we have done is we have now connected Zoom to our Facebook account, except that we did not use the native connection. We used a direct connection between Restream and Zoom. And this is going to be important because it's going to allow us to do multi-streaming in a later part of the course. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to walk through the process of getting your Zoom webinar embedded into your WordPress website. Now this is a multi-step process that we're going to work through. Now we won't be able to start this process with the client. We'll need to go to our online account in order to set up our webinar or our meeting. Now in order to press forward, you are going to need to have the webinar plan. So we're actually going to go to the webinar section to start a webinar. And what we're going to do is we're going to click schedule a webinar and we're going to give our webinar a title and we're going to select all the details of that webinar. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave this as it is and then we're going to click schedule. Now that we have created our webinar, what we're going to do is come all the way to the bottom and we're going to look for this section that says live streaming. And what we're going to do is click this link we're then going to click configure live stream settings. 
Now you'll notice then that what you're going to need is a stream URL, a stream key, and a live streaming page URL. And we're going to use Restream.io in order to be our delivery system for the live stream. So what we're going to do is we're going to click to the dashboard and then we're going to click on add a channel. What we're going to do is we're going to add either a YouTube event or a YouTube stream now link. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to choose to use YouTube events. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to click this button that says connect YouTube events to our Restream account. Now, you'll want to be logged into your YouTube channel, the one that you use for live streaming. And to do that, we're going to click connect YouTube events. We're going to select the account. We're then going to allow Restream to access our Google account. We're now going to give our stream a title. We're going to select the category and we're then going to click save. Now what's going to happen is that when we connect our live stream to Restream, Restream is going to connect that stream to our YouTube account in a live stream. So what we're going to need now is we're going to need to get the live stream URL. And so we're going to copy this live stream URL and we're now going to head back to Zoom. And what we're going to do is place the stream URL here in this area. We now need to head back to Restream so that we can get our stream key. So we're going to grab our stream key in this area. We're now going to head back to Zoom and we're going to place our stream key in this area. What we're now going to do is we're going to place our streaming page URL. Now if you're using YouTube and you're using YouTube events, this is going to be difficult because there's not going to be a particular live streaming page URL that you can direct yourself to in order to determine if your live stream is working. And it's important to demonstrate this because there are two channels inside of Restream.io for YouTube. So what we're going to do is we're going to head back to Restream. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete this channel. And we're going to go back and we're going to add a channel. And instead of using YouTube events, we are going to use YouTube Stream Now. And we're then going to connect YouTube Stream Now. We're going to allow YouTube to manage our account. And so now what we're doing is we're using Restream to connect to YouTube Stream Now. Now that's going to be important because what we need to do now is we need to go back to our YouTube channel so that we can get our live streaming URL. And to find that URL, we're going to come into our YouTube channel and we're now going to go into this section that says go live. And we're going to go into our Stream Now Classic section. If you scroll down here to the bottom, you're going to see that there is a URL for your live stream when it goes live. We're going to copy that URL and we're going to head back then to Zoom. And this is the page that we want to be directed to to make sure that we know that our live stream is going to be working. So we're going to place that URL here in the custom live stream and we're going to click save. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start the webinar. We're going to open up our Zoom meetings. And we're going to join the webinar. So now what we're going to do is we're now going to go to this area and we're going to go to the bottom three dots here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go live on a custom live streaming service. And we're going to see Zoom connecting to our Restream account. And you'll notice then that we are directed to the page where we see our live stream happening on YouTube with our Zoom account. Now the reason why this is important to come to this page is because it's going to be this embed URL that we're going to use. We're going to click the share link. And what we're going to do is we're going to click the embed code. 
We're then going to grab this embed code. We're going to copy this embed code and we're then going to head to our WordPress website. And so what you're going to do is you're going to find the appropriate page or post. You're going to add here a new page. Now it's possible you could be using some kind of custom plugin or theme. In any case, you're basically going to be looking at a way to post HTML code to your page. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to click this plus button. We're then going to look for the custom HTML. We're then going to place this code inside of this area. And once we have the code in there, what we're going to do is we're going to preview the code. And when they push the Zoom play button, they'll then be watching our Zoom webinar on our website. What we're going to do here is we're going to stop the stream. And we're going to stop the recording. And we're just going to look at very briefly the two other ways that you can connect. Now, just as Facebook has its own native connection, you can also connect to YouTube by clicking this link that says live on YouTube. Google is going to ask if you're giving permission, you'll say allow. You'll need to grant Zoom permission to manage your account. You'll then need to allow Zoom to make changes. You'll then set your Zoom webinar. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that you will have the opportunity to dictate how your stream is going to be seen. Now, in this case, we're going to dictate it to be seen unlisted. We're now going to pick go live. Zoom will connect the live stream then to your webinar. And you will then be live. What we're going to do here is we're going to stop the stream. And we're going to now take a look at one more thing inside of Restream. Now, if you choose to use Restream, one of the things you're going to note is that you're going to have to edit your video once the session is over. You don't have the opportunity to make any changes to the title. You do have those changes with the other channel of YouTube inside of Restream. Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to embed or connect our live stream in Zoom to our Twitter account. And to start the process, what we're going to do is we're going to schedule a webinar. And once we schedule that webinar, we're going to go through the process of doing all of the things to it to customize it in the way that we want it to be. Once we've done that, we're going to save the actual webinar. And once we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to then come to our live streaming section. What we're then going to do is to configure our live stream settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Restream account. We're going to get the stream URL, the stream key, and then we're going to go to a live streaming page URL. Before we do that, we're going to need to go inside of our Restream channel and we're going to need to connect our Periscope account. Now, if you don't have a Periscope account and you're not logged in, you can sign up for Periscope through your web browser. And what you'll do is you'll come to periscope.tv and you'll come to this page and you'll then click sign up. What you'll then do is click create new account. You'll then determine what kind of new account you're going to create. Now what Periscope will look for is it will look for a Twitter account in order to connect you to Twitter. Now, if you don't have a Twitter account, you're going to click this link that says sign up for Twitter. If you do have a Twitter account, what you're going to do is you're going to connect your Periscope account to your Twitter account by putting in your Twitter name and email address here in this area and then connecting it through this authorization form. Once you do that, you should then be connected to Periscope and you should see your Twitter profile picture here in the margin of Periscope. And if that's the case, then you're ready to begin the process of connecting your Twitter account as well as your Periscope account to Restream. So what we're going to do inside of Restream is that we are going to choose a channel and we're going to click on this box that says Periscope by Twitter. 
What we're then going to do is we're going to connect Periscope. Now what we're then going to do is we're going to authorize Restream to work with our Periscope account. Now we know that our Periscope account is already connected to our Twitter account. We're now going to click Authorize. What we can now do is to come back to this gear. We can click Edit Settings. We can either enable or disable Super Hearts and then click Save. We're now ready for our live stream to be broadcast from Zoom into Restream and then into Periscope which will land on our Twitter feed. That means then that the page that we'll want to see is going to be our Twitter profile. And what that means then is that we're going to place that profile name in this dialog box. What we'll now need is the stream key and the stream URL and we're going to get that from Restream. So we're going to grab the Restream URL. We're now going to head back to Zoom. Once we have it, we'll then head back to get the stream key from Restream. And once we have the custom stream configured, we can then save the entire stream. What we're now going to do is start the webinar. We're now going to open our Zoom meeting. We're now going to join with our computer audio. What we're now going to do is we're going to connect to Restream. And we're going to connect by going live on our custom live streaming service. Zoom is now going to connect to Restream and Restream is now going to connect out to Periscope and then broadcast to our Twitter account. And you can now see our live broadcast on Twitter. Hello and welcome. Now in this video we're going to go through the process of streaming our Zoom video to multiple social media sites at the same time. And to do that we're going to click schedule a webinar. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and schedule the webinar with all of the parameters that we have by default. And what we're going to do then is we're going to come down into the live streaming area. And once we do that, we're going to click on Configure Live Stream Settings. And what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to go into our Restream account. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the channels that we are going to stream to. So in this case, the first channel we're going to add is going to be our Twitter channel. And we're going to add Twitter through Periscope. And so since we're already logged in to our Periscope account as well as our Twitter account, all we'll need to do is to click Connect Periscope. We'll then connect and authorize, and our Periscope account is now set. We'll now click Add Another Channel. And what we'll do this time is we will then add in our YouTube channel. We'll then allow our channel to be used by Restream, and then our channel will then be set. Now remember with YouTube Stream Now, we do not have settings that we're going to be able to use. What we're going to do now is we're now going to add in another channel. This time we're going to add in our Facebook group. So what we're going to do now is we're going to connect our Facebook group. We're going to click Connect Facebook. We're then going to select our group. And then we're going to click Save. What we're now going to do is we're going to add in our custom RTMP channel. And we're doing this so that we can add in our Instagram channel. So we're going to click Custom RTMP. And what we're going to need is we're going to need to connect our RTMP URL and Stream Key. Now to do that and to connect to Instagram, we're going to need to use a third-party application called Yellow Duck. And what we're going to do is we're going to come to yellowduck.tv. We're then going to download the software to our hard drive so that we can make the connection to Yellow Duck. We are then going to go through the Yellow Duck installation process. What we're then going to need to do is to log into our Instagram account using our Instagram username and password. Now, once you've done this with Yellow Duck, 
you'll have your RTMP URL as well as your stream key. You're going to copy them both and head back to Restream. When you copy them into Restream, what you're going to do is write in your display name also. We're then going to click Save. And what we basically have now are going to be four channels and we're going to be streaming to them all simultaneously. We are going to stream to a fifth channel because we have our YouTube Stream Now link and we're going to use it in order to stream to our website but we must start the stream first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to YouTube Now and we're going to get our YouTube Stream Now page. And we're going to go to our Stream Now Classic page. We're going to scroll down to the bottom and we're going to get our share link. And this is going to be the page that we want to view to make sure that our stream is going to be going live and to get our embed link. So we're going to place that streaming link here in this area. We actually now need to go back to get our streaming key link. And now that link is present from Restream. We're now going to save our parameters inside of our webinar. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start the webinar. And we're going to allow Zoom meetings to open. That's going to open into our meeting table. We're going to click Join with Computer Audio. And what we're going to do now is we're now going to go to our More area. We're then going to go to Live on Custom Live Streaming Service. So now we're going to start pushing our Zoom broadcast to Restream, which will then stream it out to the four channels. And our stream is now active. So what we're now going to do is we're now going to get this share link. We're now going to go and grab the embed link. We're going to copy that entire embed link. And basically what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to our WordPress website. What we're now going to do is we're going to head into our HTML. We're going to copy our code into the area. We can then preview our page. If the preview looks to be the way we want it, we can then publish the page. We can then view this page. And if the individual clicks this button, they will then be watching our live stream. So basically what we're doing now is we are taking our Zoom webinar and we are broadcasting into five different areas at the same time. Instagram, Twitter, our website, YouTube, and our Facebook group. Hello and welcome. Now in this process what we're going to do is we're going to add individuals to a Zoom webinar when they make a specific purchase of an affiliate product. Now it's a fairly well established process for you to be able to add individuals to your after sale autoresponder when you're using third party cloud connector Zapier. Zapier can be used to connect an after sale autoresponder to any Warrior Plus purchase. You can also connect an after sale autoresponder or process to a Thrivecart purchase. And you can do the same for ClickBank. And Gumroad is also the same. However, this process does not account for an automated way to add an individual to a Zoom webinar when they make an affiliate purchase since they are already an existing customer. However, there is a way to do this when you are promoting a product within the JVZoo network. And for example, if we were to look at a specific product and we were to request to promote a specific product, what you would find inside of the product promotion area is that you're going to have an area here for what are going to be integrations. You would click on that area. And basically what you would be able to do here is whenever this product is sold, you would be able to add an individual to your after sale autoresponder provided that you are using GetResponse. So what you would have to do is you would first start by using the API key inside of your GetResponse account. 
Now, if your GetResponse account is not integrated with JVZoo, you'll need to undertake that process. That will give you a specific API key to be used in your JVZoo account with your GetResponse account. You'll need to copy that API key. Now, obviously, for the sake of this video, the API key here is blurred out. However, what we're going to do here is copy the API key in our specially integrated GetResponse account with JVZoo. What we are then going to do is we're going to add that API key here inside of the product that we are going to be promoting. What we're then going to do is we're going to save the account. What we're then going to do is choose a specific list within our GetResponse account that we want the individual to be added to when they make this specific affiliate purchase. Now, if you don't have a Zapier account, you will need to sign up for one. And so what you'll do here is to come to zapier.com and then sign up. Now, there is a 14-day free trial. However, after 14 days, this is a paid application. And for a complex Zapier setups, you are going to need to have a premium account. Now, what we're first going to need to do is we're going to need to connect GetResponse. And we're going to write in in this box is we're going to connect GetResponse to Zoom. And so basically what we're going to do here is we're going to set the trigger at a new contact, which is someone added to your email marketing list. We're going to say that when someone's added to a specific list, we want them added to a specific Zoom webinar. And so what we're going to do here is we're now going to click use Zap. Now, if you don't have a GetResponse account connected to your Zapier account, you are going to need to do that first. And so what you're going to do here is you're going to click add a new account. That's going to open up this Zapier dialog box. And what you're going to need to do is to go inside of your GetResponse account to get your GetResponse API key. So we're going to come into the integrations. We're then going to go into our API in this area. Or as of the recording of this video, one of the things you'll see is that GetResponse has a direct integration. And so what we can do here inside of GetResponse itself is we can actually click Connect Zapier. And what we can then do is click the Authorize button. Now, for the sake of this video, we're not going to click this authorize button since we already have this GetResponse account connected to Zapier. However, you can take this easier process to set up your Zapier account with GetResponse. Or you can click Generate API Key. Once that GetResponse account is connected to your Zapier account, you can choose it here in this area. What you can then do is you can click the Continue button so that you can choose a specific get response list. Now in this case, we're going to choose the same get response list that we chose in order to set up our JVZoo affiliate product sale. So we now have our product set up. We're going to click continue. You can test a specific list, but if you don't want to test anyone that's actually going to be on that list, you can click skip test. Zapier will then get sample data. What you'll then do is click continue. Now what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to connect your Zoom account to Zapier. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to state that what we want to happen is to create a specific registrant in Zoom when that action happens in GetResponse. We're now going to click Continue. What we're now going to need to do is to choose a Zoom account or to set one up. In order to set up and connect our Zoom account to Zapier, we're going to need to sign into our account inside of the Zapier API. Once we select that Zoom account, we'll then click Continue. Now you should already have a webinar set up inside of Zoom. If you don't have one, you're going to need to set one up in order to complete this process. What we're now going to do is we're going to choose the webinar that we want to add people to when they purchase the affiliate's product. We're going to click and add that webinar. 
And when we click on email, what we're doing is we are mapping information. Now, you'll notice then that what we did was we have sample data. So what we're going to do here is we're going to choose the email because we want that to be matched to the email field. We're going to choose the first name. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to determine how to map this information. And then we're going to choose a confirmation email. We're pretty much going to do the same thing. And what we're saying here is we want or we don't want a confirmation email to be sent. In this case, we're going to state that we don't want a confirmation email to be sent. We're then going to click continue. What we're now going to do is test and review our system. So we're going to click test and review. And once we've done that, our zap is ready. What we have basically now done is we have now connected get response to Zoom. And so every time that there is an affiliate purchase inside of JVZoo for a specific product, we are now going to have that individual added to a specific Zoom webinar. Welcome back. Now the final process is not a technical process at all, but it's one that's often left out of Zoom practice. And that is sending a video instruction to the individuals that will be joining your Zoom webinar. And so the final video process is going to be one where the next video is one that you should either send to those who are going to be attending your webinar or meeting, or one that they can watch on your website before they attend. So when we walk through the next video and the next steps, this meeting is being recorded. We will be telling your attendees what it is that they can expect from you. Now, in some cases, we may explain things that may or may not occur, such as the fact that it's possible is that you may be broadcasting this webinar or meeting to another platform. So with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video process or in another video course. Thank you.